G'day and welcome. Some months ago I started talking about how to graph parabolas and quadratic equations. And in doing so, I talked about the fact that when we graph a parabola, there are some key points of interest. We're interested in where the parabola crosses the x-axis. We're interested in where it passes through the y-axis. We're also interested, because a, a parabola is symmetric, where the axis of symmetry might be, and we're interested in the vertex. I probably haven't drawn this very well, but the vertex is the lowest point on the parabola. Now, these are four different things. The axis, the vertex, the y-intercept, I'll just write the word intercept here, Y on actually, and the x intercepts, which are often known as the roots or the zeros of the quadratic equation. I'll call them x intercepts here on the graph. These four things we need to develop skills to find, and in this particular video, I'm going to talk about finding the y-intercept. It's probably the easiest thing to find and I really hesitated about making a video about it but I think it's important to have the video because some students I know have struggled with it and because not every parabola or not every quadratic is written in the same form and I'm going to introduce you to the three basic forms that quadratic equations are written in and how we find this way to set in every case. Now the principle for finding the y intercept is profoundly simple and it is simply substitution or in a more profound sense, we're solving simultaneous equations. This particular line, the y-axis, has an equation. Now, it's not as complicated as straight lines in other directions or a curve, but it nonetheless has an equation. And the equation is this. It is x equals 0. Everywhere along this line, the x value is 0. The y value changes can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, etc. The y value itself varies, but the x value is always 0 because we go neither to the right nor the left on the x-axis. We're always lined up with the 0 mark on the x-axis. And because that is the equation for the y-axis, if we solve that at the same time as we solve the equation for the parabola, our quadratic equation, we will find the y value where they meet. And it's this simple. We substitute x equals 0 into the form of the parabola that we have. Now, I've written up here the three common forms. This one here is called the general form for the quadratic equation. We typically see it written as ax squared plus bx plus c. I've written an example here. You could put in any numbers. Minus 7x squared, minus 21x plus 11. Doesn't really matter. This form here where we have two terms or two binomial expressions multiplied together is called the factored form. And I've given an example here where we might have a 2 out the front and x minus 1 times x plus 4, and I'm sure you've encountered these. And the third form, it's often written with a, a sorry, that's meant to be an h, often written with an h and a k, uh, and this is called the vertex form of the parabola, for reasons I'll go into in a future video, not this one, but I'll, let's just write vertex form. It's particularly good for finding the vertex uh, more on that in another video, as I say. 
but it's written in this form. And you can see it's quite different from the other two. And the example I've got is y minus 3 is 2 lots of x plus 1 all squared. And all we have to do in each case, in these three typical kinds of cases, is to substitute x equals 0. Now, here we're using y notation instead of function notation. We could have used this kind of notation, fx equals our particular quadratic. And to substitute x equals 0 is easy, we simply find f of 0. You know, we can put a 0 in place of the x. But when we have this, it's actually nice to use a heading. And I showed this in an earlier video. I would write the heading at the top, y-intercepts, to explain what I was looking for. And next to that, I would write x equals 0, because that's how I'm going to find it. And then I'd write this, y equals 2 lots of 0 squared plus 4 lots of 0 minus 3 because we're substituting 0 in place of the x's and of course multiplying anything by 0 is 0 so these two terms disappear totally and y equals negative 3 will be the intercept now of course I, you should see this quite clearly I hope that in the general form where we have x squareds and x terms, these will both disappear when x is worth 0. So it's the last term, this term, that is our y-intercept. So this particular form is my favourite for finding the y-intercept. It's not so good for other purposes. This is good for another reason, we'll go into later, and this is good for a third reason. This one is good for the y-intercept. Here it's more difficult. If I substitute y x equals 0 in, in order to find the y-intercept, I would put 0 in place of the x and 0 in place of this x. And I think you can see 0 minus 1 is still minus 1. 0 plus 4 is still 4. So I'd have to multiply 2 by minus 1 by 4. Now 2 4s are 8. Multiplying by minus 1 would make it negative 8 minus 8. If you're trying to do this in your head, it's quite easy. It's this coefficient times this number times this one. In the case of this vertex form, we substitute x equals 0. Now, it's slightly more complicated here because we have a constant on, I better get on this side, we have a constant on the left hand side with the y and when we substitute x equals 0, we get 0 plus 1 squared. Again, the 0 makes no difference to the constant. So we have 1 squared here, which is 1, times 2 is 2. I might be running off the bottom of the board here. And you would see that we would have to add 3 to both sides of the equation. So there's a bit more manipulation in this case. I'll write the solution over here. y would equal 5. That's awful. Being right-handed and writing backwards. There we go. So this particular parabola would go through negative 3, which would be about here. This particular one would go through minus 8, which would be down around here somewhere. And this particular parabola would go through plus 5. Now at this point we don't know where else they go. But that's not our job in this video. Our job is simply to identify the point on the y-axis where the parabola passes. So just remember, the heading would be y-intercept x equals 0. Perhaps I should just demonstrate, demonstrate that quickly. So imagine that we've simply been asked to graph y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. As you can see, this is in the first form, the, the general form of the quadratic. I would go through four steps as I showed at the very beginning of the video to find the intercept, the zeros or roots, the axis and the vertex. In this video we're looking at the first of those steps and you can label, you can number them if you wish. First we're going to find the y-intercept 
and we're going to do it by setting x equals 0. It's nice to use words to explain what you're doing. And then we would simply explain y equals 0 squared minus 5 lots of 0 plus 6 equals 6, because these terms disappear. And I would like to say, I think it's a courtesy to say this, therefore the y-intercept or the intercept is equal to the point i with the coordinates x equals 0 and y equals 6. This is a nice little summary statement, and it means later when you come to graph the line, uh, well, the parabola, up here at plus 6, you can put a capital I, and your teacher or the examiner or anyone following you can see the capital I, look through your notes and find this, and say, right, I understand where you've found this, and I understand what that point is. Three more steps to come, they'll be in future videos, but I hope that's made sense. It's quite a simple step. Uh, not many students set it out very, very clearly, but I encourage you to do it this way. I thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please click on the like button. If you have a pertinent comment, please leave one. I'd love to read it. And of course, I encourage you to subscribe. When I come to the next step, which is about finding the zeros, there are a number of ways, uh, notably, factorising, completing squares and using the quadratic formula and I will need a number of videos to show you how to factorise effectively. There's a bit of a series coming. So please subscribe and learn more about those. And again, I thank you for watching.